Well, hello, my friends. Jason Levine here, Worldwide Product Evangelist for Adobe. And you know, people are always asking me, what is transcoding? So I thought I'd take this opportunity to actually show you, using some other software, um, what transcoding is all about. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are inside of Final Cut Pro's login transfer window, and here's where you'll begin the process to transcode your media. Now, what is transcoding? It's simply the process of converting a media file from one format to another, right? So basically we're taking one format, converting it to make it easier to edit and to, to process and to grade and to do all of these other things. That's sort of traditionally why you transcode, just because the native media wouldn't play back smoothly. Obviously, as you go back uh, with older machines, um, the machines themselves, the drives, the, the, the amount of RAM they had, couldn't handle uncompressed media, so you had to transcode. So again, this is kind of the, the, the way that it's been done. And this is how you'll start with it. So we're gonna, we're gonna work with three different kinds of footage here. So let's go ahead and uh, import some footage. And you'll see that I'm in a tapeless formats folder. This is the same folder that we're going to use uh, multiple times. And in here I've got a whole bunch of, ser uh, a whole series of um, different formats. The ones I'm gonna focus on are AVC Intra, uh, Red R3D, and Canon 5D and 7D footage. Now, again, the interesting thing here is that uh, AVC Intra you can bring in no problem. You don't need anything special in Final Cut uh, to import this footage. For the red stuff and for the Canon stuff, you actually need a separate downloadable plugin. It's free, uh, but you need this plugin to be able to import the footage just to even get started. So really, actually, right now, I didn't bother to grab the Canon one just yet. I'm gonna start with the AVC Intra and the R3D footage and we'll sort of take it from there. So let's go ahead and grab AVC Intra. And we'll go ahead and open this. And again, all of you who've done this, you know what this looks like. And we'll also grab some red footage here. So here's our R3Ds. Go ahead and open that. It's going to take a second just to add all of those big files, lots of media. There we go. Okay. And again, you can choose how you want these to come in. You can either use the, uh, if you're going to wrap the red media either in uh, ProRes 422HQ, or if you're going to use the, the QuickTime wrapped red, uh, red format, whichever one you choose, that's entirely up to you. The idea is that once you have all of these, we can take them, we can add them all to the queue, and it's going. And going. It's fun. There's one. And it's going. And going. One thing that's kind of missing here is a uh, an indicator to tell you how long it's going to take? I, maybe there is a way to see that, I don't know. I don't transcode enough to know. Um, it's actually going pretty quickly, considering that we're dealing with 4K media, uh, at least in terms of the red stuff. Actually, oh, this is still ABC Intro. You know what, it doesn't matter where you transcode, right? Because here's the thing, transcoding just takes time. You're converting, right? So to put something into a new format entirely, takes time. And that's what we're seeing here. We're still processing, we're still doing all of this. So now what I'd like to do is let's go into Premiere Pro and show you what it's like without transcoding. I'm gonna bounce over to Premiere Pro and notice I've got the same the same exact uh, file directory here. Here's my Canon 7D, all the same footage, the AVC intro, the R3D. Zoom back out there. And again, we can simply click on our AVC Intra folder. Now what the media browser in Premiere Pro will do is it's all automatically going to look at all the footage in there. And because we read all these files natively, there's no transcoding necessary. I can simply double click. It'll bring it into the source monitor, like so. I can choose my playback resolution. But once it's in the source monitor, now, ready? Here we go. Boom, play. We're playing. Now, ScreenFlow's probably not capturing this full real time. It's playing real time though, and we're ready. We wanna start cutting this? Okay, let's drag it into the window and let's create a new sequence, automatically have it make it for us in the proper frame size, pixel aspect ratio and frame rate. Ready, here we go, drop it onto the new sequence icon, and boom, we're cutting. We're ready, we're starting, we're, we're ready to go. Next clip, okay, let's bring this next one in. Yeah, we want this one too. Drag it right down into the timeline, boom. We're ready. There's no transcoding, we're just editing. How about we start adding some additional footage in here? Uh, let's go down to our R3D stuff, okay. Double click on R3D, here's our footage again. I can put this into a new sequence, or I can drop this down into my existing sequence. I can start playback, and boom, we've got playback. This is the native R3D media. I didn't transcode it, I didn't change the file format. It's playing, it's working, we drag it, and we start cutting it. It's, it's that simple, right? Um, you know, there, there's really nothing else you can say. And if we go back to uh, our log and transfer, we're still going. 
I've already brought in three clips. I'm starting to cut. I've got red media. Oh, here, while that's going, let's go ahead and grab some uh, DSLR footage. Okay, here, here's my Canon 7D. This happens to be, if we look at this, you've seen this from some of my other videos. Here's some footage from India. This is 720p60, you can see it up there. There it is, I don't need a plug-in. I'm just reading the MOV files natively. Click it, drag it, drop it, it's in the timeline. Now you see the difference between transcoding and not transcoding. Again, we can go back here. We're still processing, right? It's still transcoding the red media. And that's, that's what people have dealt with. Now listen, that's not to say that you never need to transcode. But if you need to cut something quickly and you don't have time to waste, you can cut it here natively. And there's a lot of misconceptions when you talk about transcoding. A lot of people think traditionally that in order to get greater than 8-bit color, if you wanted to do 10-bit or work in greater than 8-bit depth, you had to go to an intermediate codec. And for other software, that is true. In Premiere, however, that is not. That is incorrect. That is false. Because Premiere will automatically upsample your media to 444, 32-bit float, upon import. Done. Intermediate codecs don't buy you any latitude for grading or anything. They simply don't. When is transcoding necessary? Well, for one thing, if you're working between lots of different softwares, right? Let's say I'm cutting in Premiere, but I want to share stuff with someone in Final Cut or with Media Composer. And remember, we do all of that because we now have total round tripping between Final Cut Pro via XML and through Media Composer via AAF. Well, I don't want to leave all this stuff in my native format if I'm sending it to somebody else because then they can't do anything with it they're going to have to transcode it anyway. So the idea here is that you can cut natively and then you can transcode after, or just transcode it so that it makes it easier to share. Another one is, if you're going to be, again, moving between Premiere and After Effects or Final Cut and After Effects or whatever, transcoding files puts a lot less strain on the CPU. Again, based on the kind, depending on the kind of system you're running. So if you convert to something like a ProRes 422HQ or a Cineform codec, um, typically people will say that just the overall performance is a bit leaner. And that's absolutely true. The difference is, is that it just eats away at your time. And if you need to deploy something online to get a, uh, you know, something out uh, for broadcast quickly, you can't spend time transcoding. Let's go back here. We're still transcoding, okay? We, we, we could have finished our edit already now. We've got a whole bunch of clips in here, and I can keep going through all of this, right? It doesn't matter. The idea is that we're just clicking, dragging, previewing. We can set ins and outs from the source monitor here, like so, in, out, boom, drag it, drop it, good to go, okay? It's that simple. Now, if you want to do your transcoding inside Premiere, you can, in fact, do that through the Adobe Media Encoder, and you can even set up a watch folder which will allow you to basically drop all of your media in there and then in the background, do all of the transcoding for you. The key is, is that if you need to transcode, you can. But with Premiere Pro CS5, you don't have to. We're native. We're native with R3D. We're native with ABC Intra. We're native with DPX. We're native with DSLR footage from your Canon and Nikon and Sony cameras. Drop the footage in, start cutting it. It's that simple. Do it how you feel comfortable. Spend a lot of time transcoding. If you're in the CS5 environment, cut right away. Thanks and we'll see you again next time.